three of those medals so far have been gold, uh, but the most unexpected one by far came last night in the XL Arena when 19-year-old Jay Jones became Wales' youngest ever Olympic medalist. A golden post box for a golden girl. In Jay Jones' hometown of Flint, they were basking in the afterglow of their best ever sporting night and clutching new stamps to mark a special delivery from London. We've already heard about some athletes and in addition to those named across other disciplines, we've discovered today that there'll be five Welsh participants in the Team GB men's football squad. The first time Britain has sent such a team to an Olympics since 1960. Now it's my turn. Uh, Richard is here with us uh, to tell us a little bit more. Uh, concerns that the Games may have consequences on the World Cup qualifying campaign. That's right, Andrea. Definitely my go now, isn't <laughs> it? Yes. Uh, probably not news that will go down too well with Welsh fans. It must be said, FIFA have confirmed that any suspensions earned for yellow or red cards during the Olympic Games will carry over into Wales's World Cup campaign. That's right, Nick. Yes. So while it's uh, worth remembering that the Olympics actually begin uh, right here in Cardiff on uh, July uh, the 25th. Uh, that's when the GB women's football team takes on New Zealand uh, at the Millennium Stadium, just a couple of miles away from here. As you can see, the stand behind me here at the Cardiff City Stadium has been specially adapted in memory of Gary Speed. It'll be an emotional night for everyone and a difficult one for the players. Eden Park can take around 60,000 fans, a capacity it's expected to fill tomorrow. The Welsh fans watching could witness history, their team advancing to the World Cup final for the first time ever. Richard Morgan, Wales tonight in Auckland. Yes, hi Fran. Well, uh, the weather's set fair. There's no late team news to report and there's been a growing sense of expectancy here all day as Wales bid to reach their first ever World Cup final. Welcome back from Rome where Wales must do an Italian job tomorrow. Hello and welcome to a soggy Paris. Uh, Wales can't win a Grand Slam or a Triple Crown here tomorrow. Hello, good evening. Uh, we're live from Newport's uh, Celtic Manor for the Ryder Cup. Good evening and welcome to to Wembley on the day when Swansea City became the first Welsh team ever to reach the Premier League. In an exclusive interview, John describes what he's been through over the last few months. I don't think the people on the outside actually will ever... You know, the people on the outside won't, won't actually ever, you know, understand how close I was, you know. He's the latest rugby star to take the trip across the channel. The 38 times capped fullback off to France after the World Cup. He told me why he's decided to make the move. <laughs> well, it's every boy's dream, isn't it? Sitting in the Millennium Stadium, changing room, uh, with your jersey hanging up, and your name on the back. Very surreal experience all around, really. From mid-morning, the white tide engulfed Wembley. They come to the home of English football to watch Welsh sporting history taking shape. They said red was dead. Now the colour that caused the controversy is back and it's here to stay. Next season, Cardiff's home strip will be the same shade as the Wales football team, while the Bluebird badge will be dropped in favour of a dragon. Some fans feel it's a blow to tradition. Others say it's a sacrifice worth making. New York's a city of skyscrapers, but tomorrow's all about a clash of sporting titans. If Calzaghi's left standing at the end of the fight, he'll have cemented his reputation as one of boxing's towering figures. Richard Morgan, Wales tonight in New York City.